believe me so, or to London in an instant and getting a reply back, you know, we, we get a little upset when it don't come in, in two seconds or, or three minutes or whatever the case is, but, but our pastor is very patient. Uh, my wife and I actually visited a church, and I'm not going to call the name, but it's in Charlotte, and um, decent sized church, and after the preacher or the pastor would preach, he wouldn't even shake the people's hand. The congregation is his flock. He wouldn't even shake the hand. He just, just when he come off the podium, he'll go to the right. Yeah. He did that one time. The first time, and we went back to the following week, and he did the same thing. And, and you don't want to be a part of a church where you can't meet and greet and, and mingle with your pastor. Yeah. Our pastor has one particular time, and it's been several times, that he has actually prayed for the whole church. Lay hands on the whole church. Not only that, he prophesied to many for things to change in their life for the better, or things that was going to transpire in their life. And I'm pretty sure some things has happened in many of your lives that God, uh, God has allowed Pastor Jacob to uh, speak. But patience, the word patience, P-A-T-I-E-N-C-E. -E -E. P, he is a pastor, our pastor. A, he is attentive. T, he is talented and he is taken. <laughs> He, he, he endures. N, he is notoriously nice. And C, he is compassionate. And E, he is educated. And Pastor, we love you. I love you. Thank you for being such a patient and loving, loving Pastor. God bless you. Amen. Give God the highest praise for His grace and His mercy. Amen. His word. Okay. The word that I have is kindness. And uh, what is kindness? Kindness is a kind deed or favor. Kindness. Pastor Jacobs, God has favored you with a heart of kindness. Your kind deeds come with no whisper or vanity. What is kindness? Kindness is the language which the deaf cannot hear and the blind can see. Kindness is Pastor Frank Jacobs. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. A tree is known by the fruit that it bears. A man is known by the deeds that he has. Pastor Jacobs, there's so many things that I can say about you, First Lady Kim Jacobs. You are a wonderful couple. The word that I've been given charge to share with the church today is self-control. Pastor Jacobs, in the midst of problems, you exude self-control. Pastor Jacobs, in the midst of persecution, you exude self-control. Pastor Jacobs, in the midst of all of the mayhem and the mischief, you exude self-control. Self-control can be defined simply as the ability to control your emotions. Pastor Jacobs, I watch you from up close and from afar, and I study you. There are so many things about you that I've grown to appreciate. I admire you. Pastor Jacobs, you are a man that inspires all of us to be better. Pastor Jacobs, I thank God for everything that he has blessed you with. I believe that the pain and the pressure is giving birth to your purpose. God has a work that he has called for us to do, and it's a blessing to sit week by week underneath you. 
Nossa. Can we applaud that pastor right now? Pastor, I do apologize. I didn't have, uh, didn't write anything down. So I'm just going to speak from my heart. That's all right. My fruit is goodness. Thinking of goodness, uh, the first thing or the first person to come to my mind was my grandfather. Always heard all my life that he was a good man. All my life. My mother, uh, I remember her saying that she never heard him even say, say a cuss word. He never showed, uh, he always treated us the same. Everybody was treated the same. Unfortunately, I lost my grandfather when I was very young, at a young age. So I was, wasn't able to spend a lot of time with but I remember my mother saying that he was a good man. Pastor Jacobs, you simplify those same attributes and characteristics. And I just want to tell you, man to man, brother to brother, you are a good man. And God bless you. He's okay. He's okay. There's not a lot of people you can go to like that and tell them what you're going to be talking about because they're going to worry about what you're going to say. And I ain't no judge, but I am a fruit inspector. The Lord did say I can expect the fruit. But the fruit that I'm up here dealing with today, matter of fact, I got two of them, so that means I get three and a half minutes. Okay. I'm talking about faithfulness today and commitment, dedication. Being a pastor, being a father, being a working man, all the above. He doesn't slack in any of those areas. That's an inspiration to any black man that's out here today that's trying to make it. He's trying to take care of his family. And for any young people that's in the building and you're sitting up under Pastor Jacobs at the rock, that's your example right there. I'm 51 years old, and yet still, even though I come to church and I'm older than he is, he's still my example. I see the things he do, I see how he makes the meetings, I see how he counsels, I see how he takes care of his children. That's a lot of time. And that takes faithfulness, that takes commitment, that takes dedication. And it's not easy. It's not easy. Pastor, I don't take you for granted. I thank you for everything you've done. And my last fruit that i got to talk about tonight is going to be long suffering. Since I've been at the Rock, there was a time when I got all caught up in myself like we, some of us, we usually do. I know I'm not by myself. Amen. I got caught all up in myself, felt like this wasn't right, that wasn't right, so I was going to stay home. And I did, and I was wrong. One thing I always remember is that when I did come to church, the pastor would always look me straight in my eye and tell me, say, I love you, man. He said, I love you, man. It didn't matter what, it didn't matter how, it didn't matter when. He saw me, that's, that's what he told me. He said, I love you. And the word that he brought it forth, it might have been for everybody else, but it was mainly for me. Because God knew what I needed at that time. And to hear him say, I love you, the long-suffering, the long-bearing, the dedication, the, the, the determination that he shows, all of that's wrapped up in that long-suffering part. Because he never gave up on me. He never gave up on me. He prayed for me. And I, there's so much more I can say. But I'm just going to leave it at that. Pastor, First Lady, we thank you. I thank you. You're everybody else's pastor, but you're my pastor, First Lady. And I thank you for everything you've done for the Harmon family. Thank you.
Romans 16, 1 and 2 says, I commend unto you Phoebe, our sister, which is a servant of the church, which is in Shantara, that ye receive her in the Lord as becometh saints, and that ye assist her in whatsoever business she hath need of you. For she has been a sufferer of many and myself also. She is a sister in the Lord with manifest evidence of her love and labor among brothers and sisters in Christ. The word sufferer was used to describe our sister. And I want to enlighten you the definition as it relates to our first lady. It means one who helps provide relief and aid to those in need. She is one who gives of herself to relieve a person in a difficult time, be it stressed or perplexed, at the altar or counseling. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Lady Kim 2011, for she exemplifies the countenance of Phoebe, one who is pure, radiant, and wears the badge of kindness. She is our First Lady. Tonight it is my job to tell you about Priscilla in the Bible. Amen. And that is my name also. But Priscilla, we know her as a woman who stood by her man. Amen. Tonight I can say that Sister Kim is indeed a Priscilla. She stands by her man and she demonstrates marital oneness. She is always there when he needs her. She's there to demonstrate her love emotionally, physically, and spiritually. Sister Kim will counsel you in the Word of God with clarity and accuracy. And that's what Priscilla did. When the man had a misunderstanding of the Word, they said, come on over here. Aquila and Priscilla. Priscilla is also a prominent woman, well known. And Sister Kim, you're well known. You're beauty, you're smile, you're admirable, you're admirable. You are a Priscilla today. You are a co-finder. You work along with your husband. You don't work in the background. He doesn't show, you don't come up ahead of him, but you're beside him. So a co-finder, a co-operator. Sister Kim, a Priscilla of today. You are a co-finder of a church, and yes, you are a prayer warrior. You stand beside your husband in prayer. How do I know? Because you've demonstrated it in my life. Pulling down the stronghold, destroying the yokes, keeping together of marriages, helping the man, the man of God, her soul, Sister Kim. Thank you. Lord, everybody. Kimberly Jacobs. I have Lydia. And Lydia was a businesswoman. She was rich. She showed purple scholars. She was a virtuous woman that when Paul came to Lystra, that he met her and she was a disciple of Paul. And when he came preaching the resurrection of Jesus, she was saved in her whole household. Sister Kim, when I look at you, I see a rich businesswoman, intelligent, and full of love that is so amazing that it reaches the whole church. And when I look at you, all I see is a smile and your richness. God bless you, I love you, and praise God for you. God bless you, everyone. I just first want to say um, to Pastor and First Lady Kim, I love you more than you would ever, ever, ever know. Let me move on because I'm getting emotional. I have Joanna. 
uh, Joanna was one of the women that followed Jesus' ministry. The two characteristics that Joanna had that um, First Lady exemplifies is faithfulness and support. Um, <clears throat> first of all, I'm a, I'm a person, I'm a watcher, I don't say much, but I do watch people. And prior to coming to Charlotte, well, prior to coming to The Rock, um, I sat under two first ladies. And when I came to The Rock, I was like, she cannot be real. <laughs> Just going to be honest. <laughs> because she was, she was a lover of people. And, um, you know, and I see, every, you know, every time I see her, she is smiling. She supports God's ministry. She supports her husband. And she's a mother, so she supports her children. Uh, she's a woman that exudes faith. Uh, she, you know, she's always someone to, you know, she'll tell you, you know, follow your dreams, don't let your dreams die. And that is very encouraging to me. So, Sister Kim, I just want you to know that I love you, I admire you, and I'm just, you know, I'm glad I'm here. I'm, I'm too with my husband. I was a person that was, you know, feeling myself, you know, and got caught up and, you know, stayed home, judgmental. But I thank God that you two reached out. You know, you came and you reached out and both of you let us know, you know, we love you. So I just want to say, I love you to pieces. <laughs> so, the rock rocks. <laughs> to the example that God has given the women in the church to follow as we are led by both pastor and first lady. The, the biblical lady that I'd like to bring to light tonight is Abigail. And even in speaking on Abigail, one of the first things that come to my mind, pastor looking at me like, hmm, Abigail husband was a fool. <laughs> But we thank God that that is not our first lady's story. Uh, she does not have to deal with a neighbor. Praise God. Praise God. But she had some of the characteristics that Abigail displayed as a woman and as a wife. Abigail's name means cause of joy. <coughs> And I believe wholeheartedly that just as the First Lady causes joy for us, we know that she causes joy for her husband and her family. Abigail was a woman with both beauty and brains. Does that not sound like First Lady? Yeah. Abigail was, as one of, was known as one of the loveliest females in the Bible. And we do know that First Lady is the loveliest First Lady in shock. Yeah. <laughs> Abigail, had <a> persona, <laughs> Abigail had a persona that was sunny and bright, and she possessed a gladness bringing presence. What that means, without saying, especially those of us at the rock, isn't there just something about the countenance of First Lady that just spills out gladness and joy? She's just always so bubbly and bright. <laughs> that's not, that's not. <laughs> Abigail is best known as a woman who was of a good understanding and a end of a beautiful countenance. In other words, she had brains and beauty. She was very intelligent, known for her loveliness, and those things went hand in hand. A true masterpiece of God. Abigail is said to have possessed charm, wisdom, and the poise of God in the most difficult circumstances 
She sought to be led by God on every point. She feared not for herself, but with her whole heart, she trusted God. She wore the joy of God as a banner in all circumstances. Abigail understood that when you have wisdom to impart, faith to share, and help to give, you must be willing to take, a, to take what looks like a risk as you trust God. And on a regular basis, First Lady, we recognize wholeheartedly Abigail in you. Amen. We all know that Hannah was a woman of faith. And I've noticed as some of us women have been up, we have been kind of piggybacking each other. But it's, it's all good because you exude and exhort so much that I know a lot of us just can't seem to really put it into words. But on tonight, I'm going to try my best. Get to bed. <laughs> Okay, uh, our dear First Lady, Kim Jacobs, definitely has a Hannah spirit. The name Hannah means gracious or graciousness. Hannah demonstrated the power, I'm sorry, demonstrated the prayer of supplication, which simply, which simply ties to the bending down posture of submission which I know she has to do dealing with Pastor James. <laughs> First Lady Kim, you demonstrate Kim because first you are a woman of faith, first and foremost. You are a prayer, you are a praiser, and you are a worshiper. You have a spirit of determination. You have endured negative attention, but you have rose above it. And we're talking about the television industry. You know what they don't say. You know what the, many of them thought, but that's all right. <laughs> 